नेक्स्ट इज फ्रॉम मेड्रास मेडिकल मिशन गुड इवनिंग सर I am Dr. Rohit presenting this case from Madras Medical Mission along with me Dr. Amit and Dr. Ashish. We will go to the case presentation. This is a 27-year-old female, a native of Tamil Nadu, presently residing at Andhra Pradesh. I want to make a comment on the informant here because she is having a significant childhood history, which is told to her by her parents. So the informant here is patient mainly. She came to us with she presenting complaints of like she is already a diagnosed case of congenital heart disease from infancy. She is married for five months and now came to our OPD with the three months of amenorrhea for knowing whether her heart condition will be stable during the pregnancy. She is relatively asymptomatic now. Since she is having a significant past history, I want to begin from past history onwards. The parents notice bluish discoloration of her lips, palms, and nails from three months of age. Till three months of age, they didn't notice anything. At three months of age, they notice bluish discoloration. and this discoloration was deepening during excessive crying however there was no history of any seizure sleepiness or loss of consciousness during the excessive crying episodes parents consulted a cardiologist for this bluish discoloration and after echocardiography the parents were told that she has a defect in the heart from birth and she may require multiple surgeries for its correction with a high risk to her life so the parents were reluctant to do any surgery at this point of time she was relatively asymptomatic during her childhood with normal activities however she was having dyspnea while doing excessive work or exercise so she was mainly limiting her physical activity and the bluish discoloration was slowly progressive in nature there was no history of any repeated respiratory tract infection there is no history of significant growth failure no history of any suckers suck cycle type of feeding during the breastfeeding times no seizure palpitations squatting episodes or prolonged fever in the childhood days she was not on any follow up till 22 years of age at 22 years of age that is in 2016 she came to our hospital for opinion regarding the effect of the heart condition on marriage and pregnancy as the parents were planning to get her married in 2016 she underwent two procedures through growing within a time gap of 3 months after the first procedure she was told that surgery cannot be done and if symptoms worsens then she may need another similar cath procedure she was also advised to avoid pregnancy if she gets married she underwent a second procedure uh, second procedure after 3 months and according to her the bluish discoloration and the effort tolerance was improved after the second procedure however the bluish discoloration has not disappeared totally presently she is not having any history of headache blurred vision palpitation chest pain dyspnea on assertion single joint pain hemoptysis leg swelling or decreased urinary birth history she was born as a term baby normal vaginal delivery cried immediately after birth there were no history of any nacu stay birth weight she remembers as it was 3 kg as told by her mother developmental history normal there was no developmental delay treatment history she was not on any medication in the childhood days there is no history of any bloodletting in the past she has undergone two procedures from groin in 2016 and she is not on any medication after these procedures she is on folic acid and calcium supplements currently as advised by her obstetrician family history she is the second child of third degree consanguineous marriage she has two siblings one elder brother and an younger sister no family history of any congenital heart disease or sudden death dietary history she is taking mixed diet normal appetite and her calorie and protein intake are adequate personal history normal bowel and bladder habits no addictions coming to the menarche uh, menstrual history she attained menarche at 14 years of age she is married for 5 months and now with 3 months of amenorrhea before amenorrhea she had normal menstrual cycles with a 25 to 30 day cycle duration socio economic history she is a post graduate in mathematics she belongs to the upper middle class of uh, socio economic class as per modified kutusami scale coming to the summary of history this is a 27 year old female second born to a third degree consanguineous married couple with a bluish discoloration from 3 months of age and increasing bluishness on crying she was told to have a hole in the heart and may require multiple surgeries with high risk surgery outcome so parents didn't do any surgery there is dyspnea on assertion in which a class 2 during childhood with a gradual progression of bluish discoloration with the two growing procedures that was done in 2016 there was improvement of symptoms and bluish discoloration especially after the second procedure she is now relatively asymptomatic and she is currently uh, post marriage 3 months of amenorrhea 
can i continue sir so at my present point of time my uh, diagnosis that i am considering is congenital synovitis heart disease with a decreased pulmonary blood flow of top physiology with a palliative procedure that is done and since it was told that uh, in multiple surgeries are being required and there is a risk for heart i am taking it as it is not a simple top it is some complex synovitis congenital heart disease top like top with hypoplastic pulmonary arteries top with av valve straddling or top with pulmonary atresia with an adequate map cause that we are maintaining the pulmonary circulation top with the coronary crossing rvot other disease i am considering is drv vsd ps with hypoplastic pulmonary artery drv vsd ps with av valve straddling cctg vsd ps single ventricle ps tricuspid atresia ps and unbalanced dv canal with ps yes tell us now no no summary of history you gone and then <clears throat> what palliative procedure is offered through the groin which relieves cyanosis uh mainly we are thinking like it can either be an rvot stenting or it can be a balloon dilatation of the stenosed valve of the right like balloon dilatation of the pulmonary valve so balloon pulmonary valvotomy or an rvot stenting or like atrial septostomy is unlikely like at this age so i am mainly considering it is rvot stenting or balloon pulmonary valvotomy yes so then in which case why are you entertaining top with pulmonary atresia with mapca dependent pulmonary circulation at all still still it can be a mapca stenting sir but we are ruling it out because he was not on any medication post procedure so mapca stenting or a pds stenting is less likely but still it can be possible possibility sir so mapca stenting improves cyanosis that's what you want to say Yes, yes. When do you do these kind of things? Have you in your institute you've done these things? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have done. Uh, so, mapca stenting will improve cyanosis discernible in the history. What kind of saturation drops would you increases would you get with a mapca stenting to get cyanosis improvement for in history taking? What is the most likely procedure that we are talking about? Balloon pulmonary valvotomy or RVOT? Yes, disease. balloon pulmonary valvotomy is the most likely, no? Yes, sir. Yeah. So then, why entertain uh, atresia at all is what I was trying to ask. Normally, yes, cyanosis dates back to three months of age, right? Yes, sir. Starts from. If ba baby is not cyanotic at birth, only yes. three months onwards. Then, following this, uh, in between, there was was there any uh, relief from cyanosis in between? no there is uh, uh, it was almost remaining static initially then there was gradual progression of cyanosis uh, there were not any relief of cyanosis in between before this procedure yeah you tell us what are the levels of rvot obstruction you get in uh, tetralogy of fallow or even pulmonary uh, it can be in severe cases it can be complete pulmonary atresia or it can be an infundibular valvular or supravalvular pulmonary stenosis in uh, around 70% of cases there will be an associated infundibular pulmonary stenosis 20 to 30% of cases there will be valvular pulmonary stenosis around 10 to 15% of cases it is uh, pure pulmonary atresia so this particular case you do you think there was is a pulmonary atresia or a severe is uh, more like a severe pulmonary stenosis maybe valvular and infundibular or valvular alone it looks like if it is got relieved with uh, that it looks like a pulmonary stenosis means Well, anyway, we agree. This is a basically a, a decreased pulmonary flow situation, and the first procedure, either it could be uh, valvotomy, okay, because uh, some of them do have a significant valvular stenosis. And the, what could have been the second procedure? Uh, I was thinking that uh, first procedure, since they came for knowing the heart conditions uh, and whether she could marry and all, I thought the first procedure would be a diagnostic cath. and uh, whether at all something can be done some surgery can be done and uh, like and after that the second procedure i thought like because they are saying that bluish discoloration would relieve after second procedure hello one more thing is that your the thing about mapca dependent pulmonary circulation is quite right on the history taking right what is the point in favor of that uh, she remained asymptomatic no 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 you gave us a history saying that you gave us a history saying that she was told multiple surgeries would be required yes sir that yes, is sir. what is in favor of your pulmonary atresia and mapca dependent pulmonary it, 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 that that thing is to us sir 
said pregnancy Cor was coronary crossing rvot for which somebody why did you think about coronary crossing rvot uh, coronary crossing rvot also like uh, rvot a conduit and it can be sold but in some complex uh, like uh, no why coronary crossing rvot is a big deal over to say that you will require multiple surgeries and will require necessarily a conduit why did you bring that how on a clinical history taking can you talk about tof with coronary crossing rvot the only thing is the operability wise so today do you think it is a major issue to say that you are going to require multiple surgeries and therefore not offered yes. why did you bring in that diagnosis uh, sir initially the parents were told that it will be a multiple surgery so when coronary major coronary crossing rvot then uh, instead of a pulmonary valvectomy or a rvot ventriculotomy they will go for a conduit which will be done later like 2 to 3 years of age so for the initial bluish palliation they might do a bt sand like thing then after 2 3 years they might do a conduit so that's why we are thinking that it may be a possibility here yeah, pulmonary artery anatomy is not adequate right from the beginning that is the summon summary of this case isn't it yes sir so otherwise i don't think um, as dr praful said bringing coronary crossing across the rvot in the i think uh, it is uh, too far stretched at this uh, stage maybe we are straddling all this kind also mm -hmm. so. maybe we are straddling could it be could it be uh, any other because he, this patient has done well after that isn't almost uh, now oh, is she 27 you. years right yes sir she was advised against pregnancy right yeah she is a well educated lady she was told that she should not be pregnant still she so which of the conditions pregnancy is contraindicated yes. which of these belong to the mwho4 category where pregnancy is contraindicated and an unoperated cyanotic congenital heart disease is That's class 3 who class 3 high risk for pregnancy an unoperated cyanotic congenital heart disease is mwha class 3 where it is not contraindicated but it is uh, associated with high risk morbidity and mortality for mother and uh, and uh, pre preterm deaths and uh, loss of life for fetus also so pregnancy is uh, not advisable class uh, who class 4 is completely contraindicated in class 3 who class 3 also like a pregnancy is not advisable sir no oh, that we agree but uh, you have to be much more specific what are the basic uh, conditions where pregnancy is contraindicated basic like NBA saturation NBA saturation NBA less than 85 on on NBA. example yes sir uh, uh, saturation less than 85 in which class 3 class 4 then uh, idiopathic pa uh, isomic rise and uh, systemic right ventricular failure like uh, pf less than uh, 30% also in aortic dilatations uh, more than 45 for marfan bicuspid aortic valve more than 50 and uh, other autopathies 55 in events. Cyanotic heart disease. Cyanotic heart disease and pregnancy is contraindicated. We agree that cyanotic heart disease is systemic right ventricular the ventricular dysfunction. So the systemic ventricular dysfunction, the aortic dilatation, they all belong to uh, cat categories. Awesome. Right. Why cyanosis increases during pregnancy? <laughs> Sir, in... Uh, Pregnancy uh, associated with the physiological changes in pregnancy, there is a fall in SVR, and uh, this will cause an increase right to left shunt. Also, there is an increase in uh, volume. So, all this will result in an increase in right to left shunt, and also. Uh, I think, think in the tetralogy of fellow, we, we should not talk about shunt actually, left to right or right to left. Only decreased pulmonary flow. Yes. Because there is no shunting in tetralogy of fellow by and large. Okay. And also, you included. CTGA VSTPS. Yes, so th this is another situation where uh, it's more a valvular PS than an infundibular PS. But anyway, the surgeons have said uh, she requires multiple surgeries and all. Then another thing is uh, DORB PS. Anyway, I think you have put in a lot of anatomical uh, diagnosis, okay? Which which tricuspid atresia PS will again improve with a groin procedure? And 
in terms of it, why did you entertain tricuspid atresia VHDPS? Because multiple surgeries from that point of view. Or what what in tricuspid atresia PS would happen in terms of atresia PS? There will be more cyanotic. One B, there can be slight improvement. Which groin procedure? Which groin procedure in tricuspid atresia uh, PS? RVOT stenting can be done. RVOT stenting in a tricuspid atresia PS. How tricuspid atresia? How will you how will you get into the RVOT to do a stenting? And that to, to do a stenting. What are you trying to talk about, my dear? How to improve intracardiac mixing? Balloon atresia can be done. So at what age was that procedure done? It will be very early in the childhood. Exactly. It is not like it is lower in the lines are almost unlikely. Right, the atresia PS in this case. Lower no. Okay, let's move to the examination findings. Uh, going to the examination, general examination. Yeah, Doctor uh, Prafil, this MAPCA stenting uh, doesn't go with. Uh, I mean, I don't think uh, anybody because MAPCA will be multiple actually. Absolutely. MAPCA stenting and again for the patient to notice an improvement in cyanosis. Oh, only only if, if that MAPCA no, is... MAPCA stenting should ink. I mean, uh, I don't know. <laughs> because they have, I mean, if you look at the MAPCA, it is not like a PDA or like a conduit. They have multiple obstructions and all. It doesn't serve the purpose. So -called MAPCA only MAPCA can be closed rather than open. Okay. Okay. Uh, going to the examination, sir. General examination, she is average, built and nourished, conscious, cooperative, well oriented to time, place, and person. Right, Anthropometry, she is having a weight of 49.5 kilogram, height 165 centimeter, BMA is 18.2, head to foot examination, no dysmorphic facies, moderate central cyanosis, grade 2 pan digital clubbing, congenital sufficient present, JVP is elevated 3 centimeter above the clavicle in 45 degree with the normal A and B waves with uh, pressure in the right hypochondrium, there is no sustained elevation of the JVP, no pallor, ictrus, pedal edema or lymphadenopathy, no kyphoscoliosis. There are no peripheral signs of infective endocarditis or aortic revegetation. Coming to vitals, temperature a febrile 98 degree Fahrenheit, pulse 80 per minute, regular rhythm, normal volume and character, all peripheral pulses well felt, no radio radial or radio femoral delay. Respiratory rate is 18 per minute. There is no distress. BP by auscultatory method in right upper limb 100 by 74 millimeter mercury. Left upper limb 96 by 70 millimeter mercury. By palpatory method in lo right lower limb systolic 106. Uh, left lower limb systolic 100 millimeter of mercury. Sinosis is mild, no? The sinosis is mild, sir. This is because procedure uh, like, like 87. And Normally, when, when do you clinically recognize cyanosis? Only if she has polycythemia. Like only if she has a polycythemia and her hemoglobin is high, then uh, we can clinically detect cyanosis. But according to her, now there is only very mild and uh, mild central cyanosis only we detected. Sir. Since she so is patient has got severe anemia, at what uh, what level of saturation you get cyanosis? If patient has got severe anemia. Uh, if 75, it can vary from 75, 70 to 75 percent. If the hemoglobin is around 10 gram percentage, then even at a saturation of uh, 68, 70 percent only, she will be having uh, sinuses. Yeah, if patient is having anemia at uh, 85 percent saturation, he will not be able to appreciate clinically sinuses. Okay. Yes, sir. And since she is a pregnant lady, we didn't desert her much. We just asked her to climb a one flight of stairs, uh, she desaturated to 84% on mild assertion, not the full assertion test. And going to the next slide, cardiovascular system examination, inspection, I want uh, JVP is elevated 3 cm above clavicle in 45 degree with the normal A and B waves. Chest is bilaterally symmetrical, no precordial bulge, no visible veins, no scars or pulsation. By palpation, I confirm my apex to be at the left fifth intercostal space in mid clavicular line. Diffuse apex with a lateral retraction, RV type of apex. There is a systolic thrill in the left second intercostal space. No parasternal heat, no palpable second heart sound, or no palpable uh, 
uh, S3, no epigastric pulsations. Percussion right heart border corresponds to the right border of sternum, left heart border corresponds to the apex, left second mucosa space is resonant, liver dullness in right side and gastric tympani on left side. By auscultation, S1 is normal, S2 is single, loud, no S3 or S4, a grade 4 by 6 crescendo, decrescendo, high pitch, injection systolic murmur is best heard at the left second parasternal area with the diaphragm of stethoscope without any respiratory variation and it is increasing with the hand grip without any radiation to other areas. No murmur heard in the back, no click or no added sounds. Other systems, respiratory system is normal, trachea central in position, no chest wall deformity, air entry bilaterally equal, bilateral vesicular breath sounds, no added sounds, abdomen soft, non-tender, no hepatosplenomegaly, uterus is not palpable, CNS conscious oriented, pupils bilaterally equally and reactive, tall power and reflexes are normal, no focal neurological deficit, musculoskeletal system, there is no joint swelling or tender joints. So the summary after my examination is a 27 year old female with history of bruise discoloration for three months of age for which a high risk multiple stage cardiac surgery was advised which was not done. This new assertion in major class two during the childhood with the gradual progression of bluish discoloration with the two growing procedures in 2016, improvement of symptoms and bluish discoloration after the second procedure with the relatively asymptomatic status currently. She is now having three months of amenorrhea after marriage on examination there is mild central sinuses, pan-digital grade 2 clubbing, conjunctival suppression, saturation 87% in all limbs, quiet precordium, RV type of apex, systolic thrill in the pulmonary area, single loud second heart sound, grade 4 by 6 ejection systolic murmur in the pulmonary area. So my professional diagnosis is cytosolitis, levocardia, congenital sinotic heart disease with a decreased pulmonary blood flow, Top physiology with the pulmonary stenosis, status post transcatheter palliative procedure, most probably an RVOT stenting or balloon pulmonary valvotomy, NVHA class 1, asymptomatic polycythemia, in sinus rhythm, not in heart failure, without any infective endocarditis, and with three months of amenorrhea. My DDs are TOF with a hypoplastic branch PS, DRV VSD PS with a hypoplastic branch PS. DRV VSD PS with AV valve straddling, DRV with non rootable VSD with the PS, single ventricle of RV morphology with the PS, unbalanced AV canal defect with the pulmonary stenosis. Sir? Yes, so tell us why do you defend the diagnosis? What procedure was done now? So, MAPCA stenting is out, why? Because we are not getting a continuous movement from the back or anywhere. So, that may have stopped functioning now. So, we are not thinking of any MAPCA sending or PDS sending. So, what about the harsh murmur in the front of the chest? Talk about what you are getting positive now. So pulmonary atresia, you would get a great 4 by 6 murmur in the front of the chest. That okay. means a good anti-grade pulmonary blood flow. So, like, it's yeah, so... So therefore, it is out, no? Pulmonary atresia is out. out because of that. Yeah. So, the findings wise, come back to your findings at 4 by 6. Murmur, yeah. Yeah. So, you didn't hear any EDM? No, sir. We didn't get any EDM. So, why were you expecting it and what, what kind of... In cases of TOF, there can be TOF iotopathy, which can lead to aortic regurgitation. Uh, there can be an EDM. And also in this case, since there was some cath procedure done, if it was a... Like, I should also expect a PR murmur. If, if it is an RVOT stenting or if it is a... Uh, balloon pulmonary how, how do you differentiate that EDM from an EDM of an aortic... EDM that you talked about. An aortic regurgitation EDM will increase with the hand grip exercise and uh, uh, sometimes if it is uh, very severe it can also produce an Austin Flynn kind of murmur that is only in very severe area and, uh, and apex will slightly be LV type whereas in case of a PR murmur uh, uh, it won't change with uh, in, uh, hand grip. What about the 
timing of that okay. murmur. Wow, what do you expect in a this kind of a pulmonary valve dilatation done and therefore an EDM come it'll up? It will be like a to and fro murmur, sir. It will be far from the A to Z. There is a gap. No, you will get it immediately or what? After yes, the sir. second heart sound that you, S2 that you hear. No, you after, after S2 there will be some gap and then uh, PR murmur. If it is due to PR, then EDM. That is more important, no? To differentiate one from the other here. It's almost so, a mess, like mama. Can you have an absent pulmonary valve in a top scenario? Yes, sir. What is so, that? Pulmonary valve syndrome patients around one year survival is seven three percent, sir. So they will not survive this this okay. much time. And if they will survive, initial the presentation will be like more of a uh, respiratory symptoms like uh, wheezing, bronch bronch constrictions, and repeated chest infection rather than cyanotic spells. Why they will have acute respiratory distress, those with absent pulmonary wear? Sir, they will have a large pulmonary, blunt pulmonary artery, which will compress the uh, airways. Thereby, uh, the secretions will be staying on and they will cause more uh, respiratory infections. Particularly yeah. those infants, the cartilages are very soft. So, because pul massive pulmonary artery dilatation will compress the uh, Tracheobronchial system, tracheal. Okay. So, the only thing is now, see, patient has got only mild cyanosis, right? 96, 97 is the saturation. That means there is a adequate. See, only thing is you are telling hypoplastic uh, pulmonary arteries. Obviously, the pulmonary arteries must have grown over a period of time because uh, now, otherwise, saturation would not have been 97 or 96. So obviously, pulmonary arteries might have grown after uh, so either a balloon pulmonary valvotomy or uh, second, whether it is a, a redilatation or whether it is an ROT stenting, we don't know. So you got just two sounds here. What added sounds were you looking for? If you I not have a third in an adult patient, tetralogy of fallow, that's what is the physiology. You're not hearing any other sound except for S1 and S2. Yes, sir. Like, uh, I, I was expecting an aortic click. That aortic click was not there. And... Uh, yes, sir. Predominant valvular PS also, you can get a pulmonary valvular uh, click also. That is also not there, sir. Pulmonary valvular click in a, this kind of a scenario, in a tetralogy scenario, have you ever heard? Sir, predominantly valvular PS. If it is in, there is no uh, infant will PS, then only you will get. Uh, you will get. So in an adult patient, we would also like to rule out aortic regurgitation. So any H3 is there or any aortic click is there. So left side, it's not there. I'm surprised that in an adult, you are not hearing anything else besides just the two sounds. That's what I'm asking. you. S3 was not present. So, so what aortic valve click or a wall click? What is it? Vascular click. Sir. Vascular, vascular click, sir. click. Why do you get a vascular click? Because, because of the dilated aorta, sir. the disease process is arteriopathy, sir. Okay, so what will you do for this patient? You want to show us something? X rays or X ray must only have been done because of the pregnancy, but previous so if have a pre pregnancy X ray, we will show you, sir. Previous X ray, you might have. Yes, yes sir, we have. So, Sir, that this is our ECG, a four channel total lead ECG with a normal standardization. Speed I am taking it to be 25 millimeter per second. It is not been uh, annotated here. Uh, this patient is having an abnormal P wave axis. It is negative in 2, 3 AVF. And also, P wave is right showing right atrial enlargement also. Heart rate is around uh, 75 per minute. And uh, PR interval is around 160 milliseconds. And, uh, QRS duration is around 80 milliseconds. There is RV hypertrophy with a predominant R waves in V1 and deep S waves in V6. Axis, QRS axis is uh, right axis, like it is high right axis, 180 degree almost. Sir. The, uh, where is the transition here? There is uh, no early transition is not here. The It might have happened uh, because here, R is positive and the transition is almost happening in V5. Yeah. So another thing is, uh, okay. And uh, right, right, uh, right, atrial, uh, right atrial enlargement in AVL you are saying because the P waves are inverted. 
but they are bigger fee based. Okay. Navial it is. Site is ambiguous. Yeah. Site is, uh, since there is a low atrial rhythm, I'm thinking about some site is ambiguous thing, or it can also be AV canal, but since I am not having a left axis deviation, more towards site is ambiguous. What is the axis of the P wave? It is minus uh, AV is positive. So, minus 30. Okay. Minus Suppose in a congenital RDC, if P waves are inverted in lead one, what are all the possibilities? P waves inverted in lead Or what are the causes of P wave inversion in lead one? Uh, it can be an abnormal position of the SA node. Uh, in the SA node can be on the right side, <laughs> like a bilateral SBC with a bilateral SA node and a right side SA node is taking. Is firing, okay, uh, just for uh, left side, not, left side, left side. what are the you just enumerate the causes of inverted P wave in lead one? Commonest cause uh, one is lead reversal, mm -hmm. then uh, left sided SA no, then right uh, inverses. Inverses, yes. that is that's in congenital heart disease. If P wave is inverted, sinus venous is yes. No, no, no. That is in 2-3 AVF, you get a reciprocal rhythm. Yes, yes, I am asking about the P wave in lead 1. Please. In situs inverses, what happens to P wave? Yeah, inverted in 1 and AVN and positive in AVR. Situs inverses. Sorry, sir. What about left atrial rhythm? Have you heard of left atrial rhythm? Yes, sir, that, uh, in left, uh, in uh, left isomerism. Left, right right isomerism. Right isomerism. Yes, I know it's situated in the left atrial. There also you can get. Yes, sir. Is, that is the importance of uh, P wave analysis in lead one in congenite, cyanotic congenital heart disease. The transition we are not getting. Suppose if it is a cyanotic heart disease, TOA physiology, if you are not getting a transition, what are the other possibilities you think? I will consider DO or B because here the right axis deviation is also much higher. And uh, about the counterclockwise and clockwise loop, I am not. Yes, one, one ventricle is hypoplastic cell. What about the loops? Uh, another okay. possibility is uh, one ventricle is predominant ventricle, another one is a hypoplastic ventricle. Here okay. is the predominant ventricle of RV morphology from the axis, or we can say a sure for morphology, but position wise, deep position wise, it is a ventricle on the right ventricle side, which is prominent. A single ventricle PS also sometimes can be there. See, the Professor Profil is asking loop. So, what about Q waves? You have to look Q for waves, are are waves in. Limb Two leads and precordial leads. That is because of right ventricular hypertrophy. In precordial leads, I am not seeing clear P wave, Q waves in 2 3 AVF. There may be a small Q wave in 1 AVL. So I will take it as counterclockwise leads. Now, what is the importance of Q waves in V5, V6? Um, one is our uh, CCTGA. There will be absence of Q waves in V5, V6. Another one is uh, looping. In case of the normal ventricular positions, if it is a de looped ventricle, it will be Q waves in V5, V6, and 1 AVL. You tell us what are the ECG findings in adult TYF? Adult TYF. Some, some additional ECG findings you might come across in adult TYF. In adult TYF, if at all there is any associated aortic regurgitation, we might get uh, Q waves in V5, V6 with uh, LVH, a uh, volume overload kind of pattern. Sir. Yeah, two to three percent can have an LVH. Then what else? Uh, right atrial enlargement. Yes, sir. Then? Arrhythmia. No, no, because of, sir, uh, RB becomes hypertrophic and restrictive. So there will be uh, RB underslip pressure will increase and it will uh, transmit to the right atrial. Even left to posterior ME block is more common. 70% of adult UF left posterior ME block. Yes. So, Dr. Praful, we'll look at so that. What is this? Is this a typical ECG for tetralogy? No, no, no sir. It's a, what is different here? Uh, one is axis. Uh, I like tetralogy I'm talking about. Yeah. So, axis is slightly more than the, what we expect for tetralogy. Another one is this uh, early transition is not there. So, it is more like uh, maybe early single ventricle kind or it can be a DORB. It looks more like the other kind of tau physiology, sir, rather than a typical tau. And about POF? POF? Sorry, sir? 
significant tetralogy P P P P P P will be normal or an adult that will be right atrial enlargement. Sir, you asked about P or T, sir. P P P P for partner. P waves will be normal and in adult though there will be right atrial enlargement, so P will be taller. Okay, let's see the X-ray. Since she is pregnant, we didn't take an X-ray. This is an X-ray that was with her, which was done previously. And this pre-pregnancy X-ray, it is a, not a good quality X-ray. Uh, it is chest X-ray, PA view, uh, gastric fundus shadow, I am not clearly seeing, but uh, heart is definitely on the left side, levocardia, with a CTR of around 40 to 45%. Uh, it is slightly overexposed to film. Uh, position is uh, positioning is adequate regarding the pulmonary vascularity there is a differential pulmonary oligemia on the left side uh, and uh, pulmonary base seems to be concave about the carinal and other things i am not able to comment from this x ray sir when you see a left sided oligemia what is an association with it left side about the arch Arch, sir, in this, uh, since I'm not clearly seeing the indentation, but I'm assuming it to be left arch. Uh, so what is commoner with left sir, pulmonary artery being absent or being stenosed? What is commoner? Right aortic arch. Right aortic, right aortic, arch, is right right aortic arch is what you should look for, right? Yes, sir. So you convinced there is oligemia in the left field? Uh, either it can be but the left lower lung field you can see some branching behind the heart is it or yes, yes, yes. yes sir. but that uh, overall the it's more right. pulmonary artery is it located higher than usual rv apex i forgot to mention rv apex Okay. Okay, we'll move on to Echo, sir. Yeah. Echo. Uh, this is a subcostal view <clears throat> where we are seeing that both uh, the vessel pulsations are on the left side of the spine and uh, the systolic pulsations are mainly we are seeing on the so uh, we are seeing uh, IBC towards on the more left and slightly anterior to the iota. The first one which we are seeing this is the pulsations is the iota and this one is the IBC. Both are on the left side of spine. So this is, uh, this lateral lateralization is not there. This is one of the situs ambiguous heterotaxy syndromes. So that, now that explains the ECG, is it? Yes, sir. And here we are seeing that the IBC, uh, we are seeing abdominal iota flows and we are seeing that the IBC is joining into the uh, atrium and we are also seeing that the hepatic veins along with the IBC is also joining in the atria. So we can take an assumption that there is no uh, interruption of IBC here. So it, it will be more like we are assuming right now, we are not confirmed, but we are assuming right now that it may be a right isomerism. We look for the spleen. This is an epical four chamber view, which is showing a grossly dilated almost like a single atrium, which is receiving the, uh, and uh, there is a predominant right-sided AV well, and there is a single, when uh, there is a predominant one ventricle, which is usually dilated, which is trabeculated, RV morphology. At the same time, we are seeing a small uh, hypoplastic ventricle, and also the left-sided AV well is hypoplastic. Right-sided AV well is measuring around 32 mm, and the left-sided AV well is measuring around the, 9 mm. Hypoplastic left sided AV valve, almost like a common atrium. Right sided AV valve is large and uh, almost like a single ventricle of RV morphology, even though we are seeing a hip pocket like hypoplastic left ventricle also. Dr. Paul was asking you whether you looked at the spleen. How does that matter? Uh, in case of right isomerism, it will be a spleen. Yeah, spleen will be absent, but it can be confirmed clinically more by a Hubble Jolie test. Or by PIT test, PIT test is a pop erythrocyte test. Normally it is less than 2%. If it is more than 3.8%, then it is a feature of splenic hypofunction. 
Tech OS, uh, sometimes uh, it, if we are visualizing screen, it uh, rules out uh, right isomers. But in the absence, we have to confirm uh, with uh, our journey test or by PIT test. Okay, go ahead. So this uh, right sided AV valve is showing a moderate AV valve regurgitation with a gradient of uh, 70. Uh, that indicates that uh, the ventricular systolic pressure is 79 plus uh, the atrial pressures. And we are seeing that the large uh, common atrium kind of thing, it is also receiving the pulmonary vein drainage. Uh, we are seeing two pulmonary veins, one to three pulmonary veins that is been draining into the roof of and to the side. Of, uh, the common atrium is also receiving the pulmonary veins drain. And uh, in this view, we are seeing two grade vessels side by side. Both grade vessels seem to have a conus. And we are seeing that the iota, it is situated uh, to the right. And pulmonary artery, it seems branching. So it is pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery is situated towards the left. Iota is situated towards the right. And there is uh, some stenosis uh, at the pulmonary artery, mainly at the valvar level. And slightly also look at the like, Infinibular, we will confirm it in further views. So, color doppler interrogation of the pulmonary valve area is showing a pulmonary stenosis with a gradient of 87 millimeter of mercury. This is a parasternal long axis view, which is showing this large vessel being the iota, which is situated anterior. So, iota is now right and anterior, and this is the pulmonary artery. This is that hypoplastic left ventricle, and this is a hypoplastic left AV valve. There is no AR. Can you show the branches of the pulmonary artery? It goes back, go to the back side. Uh, view. Going back. Very able to see it, see the branches well. Uh, we are seeing that it is branching towards the top. We will uh, like see further views. Sir. Here it is. Yeah, it is. So this is the pulmonary. Yeah. Only give me in one side that you were talking about. It's not. Uh, we were thinking like it can also be uh, like can it be attributed to the point I effect when valvar P is more flow towards possible. the right pulmonary artery and less flow towards the left pulmonary artery? Yeah, quite possible. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this is the cross-sectional view of that dilated ventricle of RV morphology. Showing ventricular contractility looks adequate. This is the arch view showing normal left-sided arch with a normal branching pattern. No coagulation. This is the suprasternal views to look at the pulmonary arteries and the pulmonary artery seems to be decent, uh, normal size, adequate size. We measured it, RPA measured around 23 mm and LPA measured around 16 mm. Then in suprasternal, we are uh, seeing an LSVC, which is also draining into the atrium. We are not sure. We are not seeing any coronary sinus kind of thing here. So it is the draining in the atrium uh, without any uh, assuming it. Sir, echo over. Should I see, show the cat images? Give us the complete diagnosis on echo. Uh, echo. And now it is uh, heterotaxy syndrome, right isomerism. Bilateral SVC, both SVCs joining into the roof of uh, single uh, single atrium, and uh, there, uh, the pulmonary veins are also seeming draining into the atrium. There is a large right sided AV valve with a moderate AV valve regurgitation, hypoplastic left AV valve, a dilated dominant ventricle of RV morphology, and a hypoplastic LV uh, uh, left ventricle, the, which is seen as a hip pocket. Both the great arteries are seen arising from 
the right ventricle and both arteries are having tonus so i am considering dorb then uh, d malpos diota and uh, there is a pulmonary stenosis in ventricular plus valvar i want to put at this point and not sure like uh, echo is it seems to be both in ventricular and valvar and adequate size the branch pulmonary arteries and adequate uh, adequate ventricular function uh, so now tell me what palliative procedure was done on this patient we are not seeing any stent so i am confirming that it is balloon pulmonary valvotomy and what kind of improvement improvements in saturations you expect after a balloon pulmonary valvotomy done at the age of 16 right what what age was she 2016 it was 22 years then sir 22 years of age what kind of improvement in saturations will be available to you for history taking to say that it was there what kind of jump in saturation would you expect for a patient to give you a history of relief uh, after the second palliative procedure if it was an isolated valvular ps there would be a very good jump in saturation on balloon pulmonary valvotomy but if there is infantibular plus valvular i am assuming that it won't improve that much maximum 10 to 15 okay this cat you have let us see this cat what it tells us as being the saturation yes sir this is 5 years ago right ah, it was 5 years ago sir ah, so this is the a picture that you get from the quickly you guys please make quickly go through okay we are already femoral artery time, but this is and that is anterior whereas the other venous catheter which is reaching the pulmonary artery is posterior confirming that aorta is anterior and pulmonary artery is posterior this is the dominant uh, the single uh, the ventricle rb ventricle uh, angiogram which is showing simultaneous filling of both great arteries and uh, the pulmonary artery there seems to be and infantibular and uh, pulmonary valve is also slightly dominant so infantibular plus valvular pulmonary stenosis and and one important thing is both the pictorial catheter and the other catheter are on the left side of spine again confirming that it is uh, uh, there is a loss of laterality uh, this is one of the heterotaxis syndromes this is uh, uh, actually the pictorial is injecting into the right uh, uh, this, uh, atrial appendage sir the morphology looks like it is a right atrial appendage and also we are seeing the svc also draining into the right atrium i can this is the lsvc at all svc is also draining into that atrium uh, without any coronary signs seems to so then this is the aortic arch angiogram which is showing left arch and normal branching pattern and more importantly no aorta pulmonary collateral no aorta pulmonary collaterals and this is the hemodynamics sir uh, svc saturation of 44 ivc saturation of 60 so mixed up venous saturation is around 48 since the aortic saturation is 72 like uh, we can take it as adequate cardiac output but uh, the patient is hypoxic right atrial uh, sorry Uh, pa saturation is 70 uh, so there is a step up of around 10% from mixed venous saturation to pa and left pulmonary vein saturation is around 97 and aortic saturation is 72 so there is a step down of around uh, 30 uh, 28% and uh, so this is like more like an admixture happening at the ventricular level and uh, the right atrial mean pressures and the pulmonary vein mean pressures are same indicating that Uh, there is either a coronary atrium or a large asd there is uh, no separate community difference between left atrium right atrium the pa pressures are 22 615 so the pa mean is 15 and uh, this ventricular edp it is 15 and on some fl giving fluid it increased it to 20 already indicating that uh, there is an overt heart failure on giving fluid it was not able to uh, maintain that and the pressures increase so there is an overt heart failure and uh, Aortic uh, pressures are at around 157, 81. Coming to QP and QS, the QP QS ratio is around 0.88. Uh, PVRI is 0.9. Measurements LP RP adequate size. Uh, descending Nakata index is around 326 and McGoon ratio is 
so from this hemodynamic data after the first cath why she was told was it is she is not operable is the pa pressure suppose in this uh, when from the anatomy that we have seen in order to send for single ventricle pathway the pa pressures are already like borderline of 15 mm and ventricular edp is 15 which on giving fluid further increase so she won't tolerate that procedure and uh, yes so this is the first cath details now coming to the second cap again uh, we are confirming with an rbot angiogram in uh, showing doming pulmonary valve pulmonary valve stenosis then we are crossing with a stiff wire which is parked across the pulmonary valve and then balloon dilatation of the pulmonary valve uh, this was followed by serial graded balloon uh, dilatation with 14 16 18 20 and 22 balloon sizes so it is a graded balloon pulmonary valvotomy sir okay so and this procedure what was the change in pre procedure sorry sir okay there is an improvement in saturation now let's come to the come to the current situation let's can you get stop sharing okay, so let's come to the current situation yeah. We are aware of all this. Now you tell me what are you going to advise this patient? Uh, since uh, she belongs to the WHO type 3 where pregnancy is associated with increased maternal mortality more than 25% and also decreased the poor outcomes in her pregnancy, ideal advice should be termination and proper contraceptive measures. But at the same time, we should consider that she is a well-educated girl who was advised against getting pregnant. And she is now became pregnant and came to know whether that pregnancy she wants to continue. So some that social issues also we should consider. And since she is currently having a saturation of 87%, uh, we can, uh, if most in all chances it is like she might need to continue the pregnancy, then we can ask her to be on close follow up with the monthly follow up visits. And uh, obstetric care should be in a center where there is cardiology uh, is also there. And whenever there is desaturation, usually towards the last trimester, she should be made aware of the like she requires hospital admission, oxygen inhalation and uh, in order to keep the saturation and uh, then if uh, like as soon as viability is reached it is better to like uh, deliver the baby and uh, we can cut short the second stage of delivery and delivery should be in an area where there is uh, cardiology uh, support is there just uh, one question first advice will be termination but then i am i am assuming that she wants to continue the, the baby's birth. point of view when will you do a fetal echo yeah fetal that echo will do or not do Yes, sir. What there are the chances of fetus getting a problem? 3.5 to 5 percent chance when mother is involved for the fetus to have the same issue. So anomaly like uh, around 18 weeks, I want to have a fetal echo, and then I will like uh, there are some chances that lesions can be missed. So I will repeat the fetal echo like uh, in all trimesters. What is the single most important parameter here that can adversely affect the maternal outcome? Saturation of 87%, which is no, desaturating. That, that will not affect the maternal outcome. There is no the gradient of 87%. That decides the fetal outcome more than the maternal outcome, saturation. What other parameters that in a final diagnosis that is going to affect the maternal outcome more? Pulmonary pressure. Everyone Here, ventricle that is going to pump is the right ventricle because the left ventricle is hyperplastic. A systemic right ventricle becomes almost uh, MWH grade four. That is the one that is going to affect her maternal outcome more than anything else. Moreover, a dysfunctional ventricle, no, it was, she was yeah. in failure even before, right? The fluid channel, it didn't do well. So it's a dysfunctional systemic right ventricle. She moves from class three to class four.